It was a San Diego State clinic a short time ago here in Las Vegas. The Aztecs advance to the Mountain West Tournament Championship game. They'll take on the winner of the game coming up, Utah State and New Mexico. Bracket Week presented by Kubota. We're back in Las Vegas for semifinal number two of the Mountain West Tournament as Utah State, the seven seed, takes on number three, New Mexico. A look at the updated bracket in the Mountain West. The Aztecs will play in the championship game tomorrow, a six Eastern time tip on CBS. We're about to find out their opponent. As we welcome you back to Las Vegas, hi again, everyone. With Steve Lapis, I'm Andrew Catalan. Evan Washburn is with us as well. Opportunity is the key word here in Vegas. The top seed, Nevada, out. The number two seed, Boise State, out. The door is wide open for Utah State or New Mexico. You look at these two teams. Two weeks ago, they were not sniffing the NCAA tournament. So one of these teams is going to have one game to win tomorrow against a team that's beatable to go to the NCAA tournament. This is going to be a war today. And for New Mexico, they rely on their relentless pressure. They force close to 17 turnovers a game. Boy, Paul Weir has brought this style to New Mexico, and they're starting to perfect it. They make you play out of control. They make you play faster than you want to play. They make you attack constantly, and they attack you constantly. How is that going to translate to a Utah State team that had to play two games in two days? That's what Paul Weir's going to try and do. Wear them out, speed them up. For Utah State, they're led by their backcourt. They have two dynamic guards, and Sam Merrill put on a show in last night's win over Boise State. 28 points, seven threes. The thing about this kid is he moves without the ball so well, so he knows how to create a shot without bouncing the ball just by cutting and using screens. Now, he's going to have to have a big game here, and he's got to make sure he's able to keep the stamina up because they're going to be running at him this entire game. But Sam Merrill, one of the best three-point shooters in the country and one of the best that you'll see anywhere. Stamina, the key word for the Aggies. This will be their third game in the last 55 hours. Merrill and Kobe McEwen have logged a lot of minutes. And for more on that, we send it over to Evan Washburn. Yeah, and Drew, and managing that energy for his primary ball handlers is a top priority for Tim Dury, head coach for Utah State. I spoke with him earlier, and he said the plan going in is to try and get an extended rest for both once in each half. He'll do that by subbing them out right before the media timeout, maybe that 12 or 8-minute media timeout. He did say there's a caveat, though. If they're rolling, they'll have to stick with them. Guys? Looking forward to this one, Evan. A spot in the Mountain West Championship game is on the line. The seven seed, Utah State. The three seed, New Mexico. Head to head next on CBS Sports Network. Oregon, 34th all time meeting between these two schools. They met twice this season with each team winning at home. Their last meeting was Valentine's Day in Albuquerque with New Mexico winning 78-63. There is Tim Duryea in his third season as the Utah State head coach, a 3-3 record against New Mexico. As we take a look at these starting lineups presented by Kubota, we mentioned Sam Merrill. Kobe McEwen is averaging 15 and a half points per game. He's part of that dynamic backcourt for the Aggies and for New Mexico. Joe Firstinger at a career high, 23 points in last night's win over number six Wyoming, the senior out of Rancho Santa Margarita, California, for Paul Weir, who's done a great job in his first season as Lobos head coach. Last year he was at New Mexico State as their head coach and now has the Lobos a win away from the Mountain West Championship game. Lobo fans, they travel well. And there are a whole lot of them here at the Thomas and Mack Center tonight for this game against Utah State. The winner will take on San Diego State in tomorrow's championship game. And 
Certainly looks like the Mountain West Conference will now have two teams in the NCAA tournament with the loss by Nevada earlier tonight in the semifinals. That helps the league a lot, Andrew, to get that second team in. Underway, and the Lobos control the opening tip. New Mexico comes in riding a six-game win streak, their longest of the season. I think tonight, Utah State's going to play more zone than they did last night. Antono Jackson drives, and they work it around to Firstinger. And his pass gets away from Sam Longwood in a turnover. And here comes that pressure. They press about 38% of the time, which is second in the nation. There it is. The steal, and Sam Logwood puts the Lobos on the board. This time, they're able to get into the front court. And Dwayne Brown dribbles back up to the top of the key. Utah State, 17 wins, 16 losses this year. They have won three straight games as Julian Perry gets that one to drop. And going off the dribble against New Mexico is critical because they're going to be all over you. And the only way to get somebody off of you is to go by him. Antonio Jackson launches and his three is off the mark. Quinn Taylor tracks it down. I think Utah State, though, when they're in the half court, they need to be patient. No, that wasn't patient. Sam Merrill <laughs> doesn't need patience when he shoots it like that. He had seven threes last night and off to a good start tonight. But I'll tell you one thing you can't do. You cannot go under a, a screen when you have the 10th best three-point shooter in the nation there, out there. Wow, how about Troy Simons getting to the hoop? Taylor back to Perry over to McEwen. You can see how they're breaking the pressure. They want to get McEwen in the middle of the floor against the pressure and then attack like that. McEwen was looking for a foul, no call. And here comes Jackson flying up ahead. Logwood jumper is good. That's a two for Sam Logwood. And he's got four early points after being held to eight points in last night's win over Wyoming, a game New Mexico never trailed, and they dominated the glass, plus 11, including 13 offensive rebounds. His brown shot is no good. Logwood to Jackson. Logwood. This time, he cannot connect. Lockwood has played very well since he came back from his little, when he was having his issues with Coach Ware. Shoulder issue and a discipline issue. He missed seven straight games in January. Paul Weir, just 38 years old, and he plays 10 guys, at least nine, sometimes 10. So you'll see a lot of substitutions as Evan Washburn described it last night. Kind of like hockey line changes with the Lobos. And, and really, Utah State doesn't have nearly the depth. They played two games in two days. The question is, how are they going to be, especially in the second half of this game? And they brought Kuiper in to play Merrill. Merrill, another three. Whoa, how about that? He's got a quick trigger. I think you have to get to the point where you play him without the ball. You have to deny him touches. In Too quick. In conference games this year, he shot 53% from deep number one in the Mountain West. Simons will try to answer. Yeah, Kuiper was trying to deny Merrill the ball in that possession. Utah State is the first number seven seed to reach the Mountain West semis since Wyoming in 2006. What makes this kid a great shooter is he's got a very quick release. He knows he's got a shot before he even catches the ball. He moves very well without it, and like most great shooters, he knows his shot's coming before he's even got it in his hands. Yogo Brito has checked in for Utah State. Here's Kobe McEwen, and it's Kuiper with the rebound. 
McEwen put 31 on him at uh, Logan in Utah in the first game they played. Kuyper from the corner. It's good. Wayne Kuyper's been quiet. In fact, in his last three games, he was 0 of 8 from deep, but he hits there. And that was such a good pass, Andrew. Went to the post and looked opposite right away. This guy's got a gun on him. That time, Merrill does not get it to fall. But you're right. As soon as he's getting it, it's up in the air. Chris McNeil's shot is off the mark, and here comes Brito for the Aggies. It's a Utah State team that went one and five in February. Finished number seven in the conference. They beat Colorado State in the first round Wednesday and then stunned Boise State in last night's quarterfinals. They're doing a better job of trying to de deny Merrill touches. Brito from the free throw line, partially deflected. Good defense by the Lobos. Court to McNeil. Now Piper in the corner again. He's looking baseline. Piper shot off the rim and no good. Pretty solid defensive set there. You see Utah State, the way they play defense, they pack it in more. They're not looking to pressure you. They just want to keep you out of the lane and keep you from getting to the basket. Hewen with six on the shot clock into the paint with the left hand. He missed it. A complete layup. He looks a little tired already, to be honest with you. I haven't had too many whistles so far. Well, we have one here. A foul is called on Sam Merrill. A back and forth start between Utah State and New Mexico. Sam Merrill already with two threes. You're watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. Team 16 to go, first half. Mountain West semifinal number two. The Lobos lead the Aggies 9-8 to eight as we check in with our principal financial game plan, Steve. Well, Utah State had to limit their live ball turnover. So far, only one turnover they have after the first timeout. Eminem boys, McEwen and Merrill have to get a lot done in this game if they're going to win. New Mexico wants a high possession game. The faster the game, the more shots, the better they like it. And the Lobos, one of the best and most prolific three-point shooting teams in the country that loves to take threes in transition. They average 11 threes per game. And they have a lead by one. Here in the first half, winner will see San Diego State in the championship game tomorrow. Lockwood is gonna go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. They've been very effective running that high low between Firstinger and Logwood. Firstinger's a very good passer for a big guy. He gets it into Logwood. He's got good uh, position on Darginton. You got to try and front him down there. Foul on Alex Darginton, and now Logwood with a chance to finish off the three-point play. He's already got seven points in the first half. He had eight the whole game last night against Wyoming. Argentine attacking, corner to Merrill, quick trigger, no good. And a rebound, though, on the offensive glass by Deron Henson. If you're going to press, you better find Merrill. And a foul called on New Mexico. That was Perry attacking. Perry was a nice spark for the Aggies last night with nine points, three of three from deep. As we go over to Evan. And Coach Lapis, that last huddle, Paul Weir with that similar message. Not that they want to deny him necessarily all the time, but the plan is the second he touches the ball, something's got to be in his shorts. So it's, it's one of those situations where you're constantly shading out to Merrill, not a full denial. Really disappointed in how they started the game with him. Yeah, I mean, they know the scouting report. They know this kid obviously very well. You're in the same league. They know how good a shooter he is. Julian Perry was 13 of 14 from the free throw line this season, but he missed his first attempt there. Now Utah State going to their matchup zone. Trying to keep New Mexico off balance if they can. 
Westwood on the wing. Now the shot clock at eight for Anthony Mathis. He was quiet last night. Great defensive play by Perry. And that's a turnover. That was all initiated by the defense of Julian Perry, the senior from McKinney, Texas. Knocked it away from behind, and then last yeah. touch by Mathis. Look at this, they double Merrill. Now first in your retreats. Henson catches shoot three is good. Deron Henson connects. This redshirt freshman is a very, very good shooter. Out of Pasadena, California, attended Cathedral High School. Hyper straightaway three. Doesn't get the bounce log with the offensive board, and he's fouled. Oh, he traveled first. Lobo fans don't like that one. It's a turnover by New Mexico. Yeah, well, that's travel. There's the full court pressure with Henson to inbound. One thing, if you coach against New Mexico, you want referees that are going to blow the whistle. McEwen setting up the Aggie offense. Shot clock inside 10. Burrito forces up a three. It's blocked. And here comes Mathis in transition. Oh, first thing was open. They couldn't get it to him. Now Mathis for three. New Mexico is one of five from beyond the arc so far in the first half. But you know one thing about them, Andrew, they make them in bunches. McEwen, tough two. For Kobe McEwen, the sophomore out of Toronto. He is a very good penetrator, and he's so strong, he can take it to the basket. And a timeout with 11.37 to go. Well, Kobe McEwen, this kid can keep you in a game by himself. He is terrific at going off the dribble. We got Utah State up two on the Lobo. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Kubota. Visit KubotaUSA.com today. By principal. We can help you plan for that. And by AT&T. Welcome back to Las Vegas. Now you can get 24-7 scores, breaking news, and up-to-the-minute highlights streaming across the fight devices, including your phone. Live and free on the all-new CBS Sports HQ. Check it out today. Everyone is on their phone. By the way, speaking of devices, I'm looking at your iPad here. You have 39,000 unread emails. Is that right? <laughs> I can't believe you said that. Well, I mean, I sound stunned. I don't ever. I, I, Apparently I not. That's a lot of emails. That's probably the most I've ever seen. So you win the prize. <laughs> hey, you're funny, you know? <laughs> 11.20 to go. Oh, you're a barrel of laughs. Utah State. Leads it by two. McEwen trying to add to the lead. He cannot. You know, so far, Utah State only has one turnover in this game the first nine minutes. That's pretty good against this team, who forces 17 a game. One of the best in the country. They go to the ground, and a tie-up. The possession arrow favors the Aggies. This tournament did not start very well for Utah State in the first round against Colorado State on Wednesday. They fell behind 20 to 5 against the Rams. Came back and won that game and then pulled off the upset against number two Boise State last night. Before Merrill could put up a shot, he is fouled. That's going to go on Anthony Mathis. Utah State's doing a great job of attacking the pressure when they have the opportunity and then playing half court when they don't because the tempo of this game so far with Utah State not turning it over is definitely in Utah State's favor. Q 
McEwen, great move to blow past Jackson, and he lays it in. You know, let's understand this about New Mexico. They don't have a great defensive field goal percentage. When they're not turning you over, if you can handle it and not turn it over, you'll get quality shots. And Utah State has gotten quality shots because they have not turned the ball over. Lobo scoreless in the last three and a half minutes. It's an 8-0 run for Utah State. Lockwood can't stop that run. And taking it off the glass is Quinn Taylor. Here comes McEwen hurrying up ahead. Merrill, hesitation now from the wing, connects. Ten straight points for the Aggies. He's a good player, this kid. I mean, that time he gives a little shot fake and gets himself a 12-footer. You know, you got to run hard at him because he's such a good three-point shooter. Three no good by Jackson. Jackson saves it. No, he was on the line out of bounds. And the ball goes back to Utah State. Look at this. They run at him. Mathis goes out of control. He goes by him. He can put it on the floor a little bit. He's not just a catch and shoot guy. Utah State playing very well right now, but as we highlighted off the top, as Taylor puts in two more, I just wonder if they can maintain this energy and pace as we get into the second half. That's going to be a big question, but right now, the Aggies can do nothing wrong. They've scored 12 straight. Nine and a half to go in the first. Jackson out to Simons for three, and that finally stops the run as Troy Simons hits the triple. Lobo fans show a little life here in Vegas. Taylor lost it. Turnover by the Aggies. Bursting her long two splash. Now Firstinger her with a career high 23 last night. He said after the game, I didn't want that to be my last game. And he played like it in the win over Wyoming, but Merrill's now fouled on the shot. He'll go to the line for two. Well, this is great movement without the ball. As you're going to see right here, there's going to be a terrific screen right under the basket there. And when that screen comes, a good delivery from Merrill. Foul was on Simons his first. Merrill makes the first free throw. And Kobe McEwen goes to the bench. That speaks to Evan's pregame report. Around the 12 or 8 minute mark, trying to get McEwen and maybe Merrill out for a little bit. First, it's McEwen to the bench. He gets 51 seconds now, then he gets the timeout under 8. And I like Coach Duryea very smart using this zone a lot. But it's, it's kind of man-to-man -man zone. It's a little bit of both. straight man to man. It starts out looking like a zone, then it becomes straight man to man. McNeil launches. And Merrill fights for the rebound. Merrill averaged nine points per game a season ago. This year, over 16 points per game. Guido nearly traveled. Paul Weir wanted a call, doesn't get it. Rito can't finish near the rim. Piper racing up ahead. Great transition defense by Utah State. And a foul on the floor. That basket will not count. It takes us to a timeout, but Sam Merrill already in double figures with 10 points. Picking up where he left off last night. When he had 28, you're watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. Seven fifty-three to go. First half. The Aggies lead the Lobos by five. Winner advances to the Mountain West Championship game tomorrow. Meanwhile, in the Conference USA tournament, the championship game is all set for tomorrow night here on CBS Sports Network at eight thirty Eastern time as the four seed Marshall 
will take on Western Kentucky, the three seed, defeating Old Dominion earlier today. And as you see, the one seed there, Middle Tennessee, knocked out early in there now flirting with missing the tournament. I don't think they get in. They're a team that definitely got hurt by what happened in that last game. In the last game with San Diego State knocking out Nevada, the Wolfpack will still go. So, public teams with one last opportunity since the Mountain West will send two teams. 7.45 to go first half. Watch how Utah State now is in a straight zone. Other times they went zone to man to man. They're very confusing. Five on the shot clock. Simons drives and hits. Simons is a physical attacking guard out of Pittsburgh. He was the first player signed by Paul Weir when he got the job at New Mexico. Kuyper pokes it away with the steal. Merrill gets back, and he fouls Kuyper. And for Merrill, that's his second foul. That was a bad foul. He, and he went and fouled him on first. He wasn't even trying to get a block there. He just was going to foul him so he couldn't score. And you can't fall asleep. See, he showed too much ball there, Merrill. What do you do now with Merrill and 7.09 to go? You got to take him out. You're up two. I take him out. I keep him in there here with 7.09 to play in a one-point game. That's why that was a bad foul by him. McEwen is back in the game after that media timeout. Duryea would have rather New Mexico get a layup there than a second foul. McEwen launches. The rebound is Simons. Simons, great look. First finger is fouled. Ah, Troy Simons has really sparked this 9-2 run by the Lobos. Foul was on Kobe McEwen. That's his first, and it sends First finger to the free throw line. Last night was the first Mountain West Tournament victory for Joe Furston. The Lobos won the championship in 2014. But in each of the last three years coming in, they lost their first tournament game. So Furston, or a senior, had not tasted victory here in Vegas until last night. He played the game of his life. Career high 23 with nine rebounds. It's an 11-2 run for the Lobos as they have the lead by one. Brown, too strong off the glass. And this is how the pace starts getting crazy on you. Merrill is out right now as McNeil hits the three. Timeout, Utah State. A 14 to two run by New Mexico. Well, really this first half in a game of runs, it was Utah State with the run to push ahead. And they led by as many as eight. But now New Mexico riding a 14-2 run to take a four-point advantage. Well, I like what they were doing earlier. They were playing that zone, mixing it up a little bit. Now New Mexico's getting a little bit of a groove, and they've missed some easy shots. When they're not scoring, that's when New Mexico's going to push that thing up the floor and make this game quick. Tim Duryea called that timeout. Native of Medicine Lodge, Kansas. He played basketball at North Texas. He was a Utah State assistant for 14 years before he was promoted to head coach. So he's been with the Aggies every year since 2001. Stu Morrow was the coach there for a long time. He was a terrific coach. And here comes that pressure again. Which really has not bothered them. 
I don't think they've been oversped up. They only have three turnovers in the game. Well, there it is, and that's what they do. Wow. And that's the second foul on McEwen. So now both McEwen and Merrill have two fouls apiece as we go over to Evan. Well, that's obviously the last thing Tim Derrier wanted out of that last huddle, other than just trying to stop the momentum. His two points of emphasis were defensively stopping the ball quick in transition as quick as they can. And then for McEwen, he's got to get out of the middle of the floor. He wants to move him side to side more. He feels like he's been two ball dominant. Offensive foul called on Chris McNeil. His first and the team's fifth on New Mexico. Utah State has six team fouls with 546 to play. Scoring is hard to come by for Utah State with McEwen and or Merrill out of the game. And Merrill continues to sit. McEwen is playing with the two fouls. Yeah, you can't have both of them in there with two fouls. You can't have both of them on the bench either. No. That's what one's got to be in the game at least. This is Taylor. And that's a charge. Two charges in a row. So New Mexico will shoot free throws the rest of the half. With the seventh team foul on the Aggies. I think if Utah State's able to make this game a little more half court oriented like right now, it definitely helps them. Lockwood off the mark. So McEwen and Merrill combined to score 14 of Utah State's 22 points. And Merrill's not in the game right now. They need some contributions from other players as Brito turns it over. And McNeil end to end for two. Five ball turnovers. Those are the killers. At least if you travel, they take the ball out of bounds. Merrill at the scorer's table as Tim Duryea can't wait any longer to get him back in. Lobos fans making some noise here in Vegas. Perry's three no good, and Firstinger collects it. It's an 11 0 run for New Mexico. And a whistle before the shot. Kuiper is fouled. And that's the second on Quinn Taylor. So Merrill re-enters. And Merrill and McEwen will both stay out there. Well, he doesn't want this thing to get away from him. I think Coach Duryea is... I, I don't disagree with what he's doing out of these two guys in the game at this point. Utah State has not scored in the last four minutes and 49 seconds. And now four Aggies have two fouls apiece. McEwen, Merrill, Taylor, and Darchington. Hands in the turnover. That's what pressure does to you. Seventh turnover by the Aggies, said. The live ball turnover is really hurting them right now. Well, these are the killers. You make a bad decision, they end up going the other way and getting layups. And this is what New Mexico wants to do to you. Not a great decision there. And here they go. And Lobo's up six. Coming up on at and at the half, we'll go back to our New York studio where Brent Stover, Wally Zerbiak, Gary Parrish, Jerry Palm, and Steve Peichel will get you caught up in all the latest scores, highlights, and conference tournament updates. It's all coming up on at and at the half. Some great rivalry games today as Kansas defeated Kansas State. They're back in the Big 12 tournament final. 
North Carolina beat Duke by five and Arizona in overtime over UCLA. UCLA got outscored 11 nothing in overtime. Well, let me tell you something. This Arizona team, I said at the beginning of the year, I'm starting to feel them again. They could win the whole thing. And North Carolina, how hot are they right now? But you know what all this does? I think Xavier keeps their one seed. Interesting. Xavier losing earlier tonight in the Big East semifinals to Providence in overtime. It's Providence and Villanova in the Big East championship tomorrow. I think we're looking at Villanova, Virginia, Xavier, and Kansas. Foul was on Julian Perry, and you see the foul trouble for Utah State. Four with two apiece, and now a one and one for Troy Simons. Simons has a team high eight points so far for the Lobos tonight. He averages nine points per game. And he's been coming along double figures in four of his last five entering tonight, including 15 in the quarters against Wyoming. He had a couple of games sabbatical this year, too. And a turnover by Utah State. Brown stepped on the line. You know, Andrew, they had two turnovers in the first 10 minutes of the game. In the last six minutes, they have five. So are they getting worn out? I'll tell you one thing. Playing against this style is mentally and physically taxing. Lockwood muscling his way down low for two more. 15 consecutive points for New Mexico. And Lockwood is the best inside player in this game. Too strong. That's a foul. Uh, Jackson reached in on Perry. First foul for Jackson. Let's go over to Evan. Well, guys, just a, a quick follow to that about the mental exhaustion that this uh, pace creates as we see another turnover for Utah State. Tim Durier told me this morning at times, and he's friends with Paul Weir, he feels like looking down at him and yelling at him and just saying, can you just give us a break for a <laughs> moment? Because it's driving us crazy. <laughs> Relentless turnover number nine. That's how you feel. It's like never ending. And, you know, when you play two games in two days, Jackson with two more, and now they're starting to play much better on offense. It goes hand in hand with New Mexico. The defense starts creating turnovers, the offense starts playing better. Largest lead for New Mexico, it's 12. They trailed by as many as eight in the first half. A 20-point turnaround. Perry can't stop the run. 17-0 run for the Lobos. Hungry for more as Melowatch throws it down. And Merrill is forced to call timeout. Great points for New Mexico over the last six minutes and 11 seconds. And they have completely turned around the complexion of this game. Yeah, it was 22-17. Merrill was hot early, but he has cooled down. And the turnovers, as we documented, have increased. Now nine in the first half for Utah State. And the guy who's done nothing, who's normally very a good player, is Brown. Hasn't scored yet. Look at the stance Antonio Jackson is in. Looking to force sideline. Perry draws contact and a whistle. So Julian Perry will go to the free throw line. Our officials tonight, Eric Curry, Dick Cartmel, and Mike Greenstein. 
Foul is on McQuatch Malawatch. Here's a look at this run, which just ended after that free throw by Perry. Well, it's had a little bit of everything in it. They start making threes, they start to turn them over, they get to the basket in transition. This is New Mexico basketball. Just keep doing it, keep doing it, and eventually it'll pay off. And that's Paul Weir's philosophy, and that's exactly what's happening. You know why I'm so impressed with Paul Weir? He's a guy in his second year as a head coach. He has this style, and he knows exactly what he wants. And he didn't really work for guys that played this style. Marvin Menzies didn't play like sure. this. This is his style, and he knows exactly what he wants. He's doing a great job. McEwen, that's a two for Kobe McEwen. He's now three of eight for six points. Oh, that's and a bad pass. The Lobos give it right back. Lockwood back in for Firstinger with 133 to go. You know, again, we talk about this all the time. New Mexico had seven guys score in this first half. Yesterday, their bench outscored Wyoming 47 to 17. McEwen, not that time with the right hand, and Hyper up ahead. He's got to finish that one. And another turnover, back to back turnovers by the Lobos, this time out of the hands of Anthony Jackson. Jackson was named honorable mention all Mountain West by the coaches and he was also named to the all Mountain West defensive team earlier this week in his lone season in Albuquerque graduate transfer from Akron. Archington misses off the feed from Brown with 47 seconds to go in the first half. Simon's wide open three. <laughs> Offensive rebound by Lockwood and he's fouled. Lockwood's been tough in this game. He's owning the paint. Lockwood with nine points, three rebounds, two on the offensive glass. Foul was on Dwayne Brown, his first. Two free throws for Logwood. As a team, New Mexico shoots 77% from the free throw line. Tops in the Mountain West and top 20 in the nation. Quinn Taylor is going to come back in. As Dwayne Brown comes out with 40 seconds to go. A difference of 10 seconds between the game clock and the shot clock. McEwen launches from deep. And now the shot clock is turned off. New Mexico will hold for the final shot. I didn't like that shot at all. McEwen, 3 of 10 in the first half. And now Paul Weir will take a timeout with 21.4 to go. He's Timeout that would be lost if he didn't use it. Well, their defense has been really, really good in the half court. When they haven't turned them over, they've been solid defensively, and they've done a much better, whereas Merrill came out of the gate on fire, hasn't been able to get much going lately. And Merrill's been stuck on 10 points for a while. A 20 to three run in the last seven minutes and nine seconds for New Mexico. And McEwen's having a rough night, Andrew. Three for 10 from the field. They need both, because of the way this team is structured, both those guys have to play well for them to have a chance. And yesterday, McEwen didn't play well in the first half, but he played good in the second half, and Murrow was terrific the whole game.
trying to get Mathis open on the baseline. Ten seconds to go. Now a watch for three. No good. Rebound to Brito. And that's a buzzer. That will not count. It's no good anyway. And New Mexico goes into the locker room with a 12-point lead. They are 20 minutes away from a spot in the Mountain West Championship game. And Evan Washburn is with Paul Weir. Well, Coach, 20-3 to three run to close out that first half, but Utah State had control early. What changed? We finally started getting some stops. Merrill made some threes early. I thought got him in a rhythm. Their zone, we didn't do great early on with it, but we were able to get some stops, get out, get some easy baskets, and get the game kind of at the pace that we want. There will be adjustments, I'm sure, from Utah State. What does concern you about what they've shown you thus far? Just those two guards, McEwen and Merrill, are all league players. They're very capable. They can get going at any time, so you just can't let your foot off the gas with those guys. Coach, thanks. Thank you very much. That's the end of the first half with New Mexico leading 37 to 25. Coming up after the break, we'll take it back to New York for 18 t at the half. You're watching the 2018 Mountain West Semis, a part of Bracket Week presented by Kubota.